Uh, not quite panic mode, getting ready for the next big tournament for War Machine and Hordes, which is War Machine Weekend. Very excited. Yeah. Uh, Jesse has taken it upon himself to not paint one army, but two armies in the, what, two to three weeks before the tournament? It's fine. It's fine. We'll be fine. Uh, but it's a pretty exciting time. Uh, and, like, I love times like this because it really motivates me to, like, hobby and get stuff done. So, uh, I enjoy it. And I'm working on my my Amazonian modded Gatorman uh, right here. Um, and there's a whole squad of them. And I'm uh, currently highlighting the, uh, the obsidian on them, which is a mix of black, coal black, uh, blues and uh, men off white highlight because that's really good uh, so makes a nice glossy black and then after I'm done like dull coating the model I'll probably also go over it with a dull coat but this guy's my favorite it's Mr. Bird Mask look at this bird mask Jesse you sculpted that? yeah I sculpted that that's amazing yeah uh, it's also Emily's favorite so if Emily's watching you know uh, bird man but yeah, so um, doing the blacks, I actually learned a lot from Chris Miller as he was working on my Siege Chariot for Kador. Um, that the highlight, one, your contrast has to be really high with uh, things that you want to appear high gloss. And that's always a theory I knew from like art school, but applying it is something else uh, because you can't be timid about it and you gotta be okay with like, making a mistake and coming back and like touching it up and sometimes I get a little too um, finicky with my models and I don't want to do that but anyways um, so I'm learning to push that and then also men off white highlight is a really good highlight for uh, high gloss blue colors uh, because it's a nice warm tone white so it contrasts well and if you thin it down enough it mixes in well enough with the um, the original tones to where you get this kind of like nice warmish whitish green blue kind of thing which is I, I personally enjoy um but yeah jesse's also breaking out some of his super secret techniques can i share that with the with the class jesse absolutely uh so jesse is using an oil based uh oil based gold paint that a metal leaf paint metal leaf paint oh yeah. awesome so yeah uh, so basically, if you guys have a difficulty applying metallics, especially over lighter primers, like I find that like priming something white, the last thing I want to do is put like a silver or gold over that, just because uh, it, it seems really streaky and it shows through, and you have to have multiple coats. But I'm watching Jesse use it, and it is like just crazy strong. Like so, uh, it, it's a nice tip. But on the same note, uh, if you're not using oil brushes for that, uh, expect your brush to get wrecked. Yep. Which is a plus side that we carry cheap AK interactive brushes, so yep. you don't feel bad. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm going to keep working on these guys. It's going to be kind of an assembly line process, which I don't normally do. Um, but I do want to uh, try to knock as much of these guys out as possible. Uh, so if you have any questions or want to chat with either me or Jesse, um, we're both open to it. And we'll probably be talking about War Machine Weekend a whole bunch. Because that's next week, and we're excited. So my uh, first run opponent, yeah, uh, Sun Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu. Uh, I, I, I thought so. That, L -l like I saw it, and I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. That, that solid build looks like. Like. Yeah. Definitely More, a change up from the Rulik, but. Yeah. Um. Just using I don't know gold. No, we were just talking Walmart. about it. Yeah, Walmart uh, oil-based gold. <laughs> So it's a five dollar bottle. I don't know if that's on the camera or not. Uh, I can I can make sure. So yeah, if you guys want a nice liquid gold, it's a it's a really good buy. And also, I did that with an open pot of gold over my models, and nothing bad happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, Take two. Yeah, but um, yeah. So I saw your conversation. And when I read the name, I was just like, is this guy his nickname? Because it was very close to, you know, 
Sang Su's Art of War. Yes. <laughs> and I was just like... He might be the author of it, and mm. I don't know, and it's going to be a terrible uh, round. Yeah, I was going to say, you're going to have an uphill battle on that one. Get ready. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of conversation, Jesse, never talked to me or my son ever. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Um, but he was messaging me, because uh, I've never met the guy before, but I know yeah. of him from uh, his tournament results. Yeah. He's a very good player. Um, but uh, he was just, you know, reaching out to me to say, yeah. you know, I hope we have a fun game, you know, I can't wait to meet you, blah, blah. He's really nice. nice. Um, he told me a funny story about how he played Brett Fogel. Brett Fogel at yeah. some tournament, and clocked him during clocked him on the top of two. Uh, so that means there was only three turns played in a maximum of fourteen turns. Correct. Okay. Yes, he yeah. was clocked. He clocked himself on the top of two. It was Axis versus I think it was. I don't think he said. It might, it might, I know Brett plays Circle and uh, Minions. Yeah. Or Winions in that case. But uh, uh, he said he was he was just determined to kill Axis. He was playing his Axis yeah. and spent his entire turn just planning this out, like intimate details. So when he, he said once he got down to 12 minutes on his clock, he started yeah. helping Brett with like proxy bases, trying to make sure like everything was right and helping yeah. with the assassination. And he just ran out of time before he could execute it. And my comment was, did he take a nap in between? Yeah, because uh, you get a whole hour to, to like, each player gets an hour to play. And that seems ridiculous. But, like, you know, I, I've known several people who are like that. I clocked myself at uh, Crucible, and that was super frustrating. I clocked myself at Crucible. I clocked myself at the last Crucible I went to uh, against uh, Nick. Yeah. Was, just stared at the board like a moron for yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah, War Machine Weekend is a very exciting time. A lot of new releases. Um, it's got basically the Super Bowl of War Machine yeah. played there, the Invitational. Um, and we're very lucky, <laughs> very lucky to have two people from Atlanta that are qualified for it. Um, myself and uh, Maximon. Yeah. And uh, even though we do not deserve it whatsoever. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun times. So I, I just I really enjoy playing War Machine against quality players, uh, very high school players, because I learn a lot. Um, so I just, I'm, I'm interested to, yeah. to, to play some folks. So uh, Emily asks, and this is a good question, uh, especially for the both of us. Um, Emily's starting out painting, like she wants to get into painting. And she wants to know like what your top five used colors are and what brand do you like the most in them? Uh, when I first started painting, I, I think a lot of people use Citadel paints. Mm -hmm. uh, this was probably 15, 16 years ago when I first started painting. Uh, I used a lot of Citadel paints, the old names for them like Bolt Gun Metal and Chaos Black and Skull White. The people who have been painting for a long time still use those names to this day, even though they've changed names probably two times now. Devil yeah, Mud. yeah. Uh, Devil and Mud, yeah, when the washes first came out years ago. But um, started painting back then. I use those paints. Nowadays, uh, now I've learned a lot more about painting and try to paint to a higher quality. I really love P3 paints. Uh, there are still some Citadel paints that are, Citadel paints are still uh, good quality paints. I yeah. just find them overall thicker. And P3 has a it does a very good job with their colors where when you're blending them out on a model they they have a lot of undertones to them they have a lot of colors that they reveal themselves and start blending them on a model so as far as just slapping model on a paint or so slapping paint yeah. on a model if I can talk I just something. crushed my model over this <laughs> um, there's, there's ways you can just uh, slam it and get it done with whatever paint or you know it depends on what you're trying to achieve so top five colors and brand right now is P3 uh, use Exile Blue is a great dark blue that's useful in a lot of different colors, just as a shade. Um, use a lot of uh, moldy ochre. Uh, what is it? Mediocre. Mediocre. I think it's yeah, the the mediocre is the orange brown. Is it the orange brown? Good yeah. paints, yeah. not bad ones. Oh, I'm, I'm The uh, Pig Iron is a great metal from P3. Uh, I use this whenever I'm painting gold, which is quite a lot. I use this liquid leaf. Um, metal, it's called Classic Gold. You can get it from Walmart for five bucks in their hobby section. It, the, I think the package shows it being used for picture frames and stuff like that. But um, you got to cut it with mineral spirits. But it's, it goes one coat go, gold over any color. It's, it's amazing. I love it. You just coat it, wash it one time, uh, and call it a day. Maybe one highlight. Uh, do you still paint like a color underneath? 
Uh, no, no, no. It's, no, I'm painting it directly over this this uh, sort of tan, mm -hmm. almost white color, and it's going on with one coat. That's amazing. Yeah. So, um, and on me, uh, I'm also a big fan of the P3. Um, I also am like. I love Vallejo as well because I feel like they do really solid colors and yeah. such. Uh, my most used colors are probably going to be Sanguine Base, Sanguine Highlight, Menoth White Highlight, Meridius Blue, Arcane Blue. Because yeah. those are, it's Cyan and Magenta, which I work into majority of my armies. Um, and thus I use them the most. Um, but really like my... My colors that I would really recommend to anyone is, um, I like Retributor Armor from Games Workshop. Um, it's not as good as application as Jesse's oil-based gold, uh, but it is an acrylic-based gold, which applies very well. Uh, so I use that a lot. I also use Nuln Oil, which is a black wash from Games Workshop a lot. Um, and the other one that I use a fair bit, uh, especially Games Workshop, is probably going to be um, Reichland Flesh Shade. Their washes are really, like, it's, you can't really compare them to any other company. Yeah. Um, they are probably the easiest way to take a decent paid job into uh, a better one. Because it gives a lot of depth to a model with very little work. Um, and you don't have to have like a great understanding of painting to, to use those and still see the benefits. Yeah, and Reichland Flesh Shade is what I use on this gold. It's that nice reddish brown uh, shade, so it gives the gold some, uh, what's the right word I'm trying to body? use? Body? Uh, body, yeah, there you go. It gives it a, good, a really nice body as well as shading it and getting it ready for, for a few highlights. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's almost kind of a one and done. And the washes, you're absolutely right. The GW washes are, I, have, I mean, even trying to make my own washes, is, you just can't compare them. Yeah. Uh, I do, uh, Ross did chime in with like the Army Painter ones. And I don't have as much experience with them, but I've only heard good things. Like I've seen, um, who is it? Uh, Kenny Boucher from Next Level Painting sings Your their. Dog. Yeah, Kenny Boucher here. Uh, but he sings their praises a lot. And um, I mean, he is by far a, a very good mini painter um, he is kind of like the king of uh, commissions uh, the literal best of all days yeah uh, and he also has a really good YouTube channel to, to turn on while you're working there's a lot of YouTubers to watch as far as paint is concerned you can learn a lot I've learned a lot from watching Dallas Kemp on the, the P3 channel oh god yeah I love Dallas's he's, video I mean he's man uh, obviously, uh, Duncan and the team uh, at the Warhammer community mm -hmm. have a lot of great tutorials. Um, Schnauzer Face Minis is a guy who's not very active anymore, oh, but man. he does some amazing airbrush work. Uh, he's, he's And the best dad jokes. Yes, and the best dad jokes of all time. Um, uh, what else? Yeah. Others, have you watched Miniac much? No, I haven't. I haven't heard of it. He's, uh, he's a bit more like high strung than a lot of, their, a lot of other guys, but... Um, he has amazing quality in his like video production, so it really kind of like shows off like his ability to paint, um, and he's gaining a lot of popularity lately. It says mini act. Yeah, mini act. So we also have an uh, a amazing painter, a few amazing painters that live locally. One of them being uh, Chris Miller, who has his own ch uh, Twitch channel. Yep. Um, and has done some work from John. I think you brought that up earlier. Yeah. Uh, he's going to War Machine Weekend to enter it into a competition. Oh, sweet. That's why I go to War Machine Weekend. He's entering in every single paint category at War Machine Weekend. Wow. Uh, so he's pretty excited. He's, get them props. It's pretty tight competition there, too. Because uh, Dallas enters it as well. Yeah. And Robert, I will, I will paint your gators for money whenever you want. Because I love money. Um, <laughs> uh, but also... Uh, not only that, but Curtis uh, Shoemake, the guy who used to be the former uh, studio painter for Weird Miniatures, mm -hmm. he decided to, he's going to War Machine Weekend, no. and he okay. has converted and in the process of painting a Magma Troll, excuse me, a Magma King. Wow. Um, and it looks absolutely amazing. I don't want to spoil any of it on stream, but you'll probably see a lot of photos of it through the weekend, which is kind of like... I'm actually really excited because he'll be, I don't know if he, what category he's entering in, either best huge base or best mod, but I'm entering my Dracodile in the best modding category. So I, it would be kind of cool to see going head to head with him and then also kind of seeing how I fare right. with that. 
So. Well, I'm not entering anything in paint competition because I'm just trying to get my models uh, painted for the invitation. Yeah. As well as Max's, I'm doing. I'm working on some of his models right now. Yeah, got a horsey. That model, by the way, is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it's yeah. the uh, champion of the wall from Privateer Press. Oh yeah. I painted one for him already. Yeah. He's got two in his Harbinger list, and they're just so sexy. No, I'm really excited about Four Machine Weekend. Mm. New Frog Warlock. All right, I'm gonna head home and get ready for my trip to the airport. All right, Mark. Bye, Mark. Be careful. Thanks for stopping by. He's uh, uh, he I looks got, interesting. I played with him uh, a proxy version of him today in my game with Jared, and um, he casted Rage a bunch of times. Yeah, he seems like a good Rage bot for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the, the beast tax is worth it. Like, what do you think? Well, he goes and will work for food, right? So, like, with me, I was having four war beasts on Rask, which is a bit to support. Um, now, granted, like two of them were bone swarms. Um, but Wield Secrets is actually kind of a big deal uh, on Brine. Because before, the only time Brine could get Pathfinder would be through Boundless Charge. And Boundless Charge isn't effective when you're overtaking or diversionary tacticsing. That's interesting. So, um, I like it right now. And then also Caustic Mists is uh, pretty good to prevent your some of your heavies from getting charged by infantry and such. That also synergizes well with uh, Vela Mist. Correct. Yeah, so like, Ras can have like a pseudo cloud wall pretty effectively. This is what Ras needed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it's really exciting because it does change up the Rask list a lot. Um, I think he'll go. A lot of people are asking him for like Jaga Jaga. Eh, maybe. Um, I think he's. I think he has a good home and will work for food. Because will work for food doesn't have a lot of like infantry to like screen, and those clouds give you. Uh, like one line of sight blocking clouds and then also one point of damage to infantry that try to go through there to get to your beasts. Is it one point or is it corrosion? It's one point and corrosion. Oh wow. So it's kind of a big deal. Uh, so I really enjoy that. Uh, and can he be free in the theme? Um, no he can't. So World War for Food specifically says no lesser warlocks are free because then people start taking like wrong eye and snap draw. Oh, that's right, because they're, they're combined. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a little bit of a, like, that's a bummer. But paying 20 points for a wrestler and him, I think, is well worth it. Because you're already paying the points for the wrestler, right? So um, why not spend four bucks on a solo that does a lot of work? Um, and also the fact that he gets um, Prowl and he has a poison spear on him. Nice. Um, and he's Pathfinder himself. Like, there's a lot of good benefits, and also will work for food, gives overtake to whatever beast he has. So, um, there's a lot, a lot of benefits to him. So, I'm excited. And I'm also assuming that his model's going to look amazing, uh, but we haven't seen any of that yet. Um, but the guy who, like, modded the original one already looks amazing, so... I'm hoping uh, they can kind of continue that theme. Wait, the guy himself looks amazing, or the mom? I mean, both. Both? They're both amazing oh, creatures. That's great. You know? That's great. Yeah. I mean, you, you come up with a new frog character, you're automatically going to be a little bit more attractive in my eyes. <laughs> so. Noted. Yeah. Man, he <laughs> called her flights delayed two hours. Oh. oh, hey, cool. Sit down and paint, Mark. Oh, yeah. I'll prime my another combo. They come unpainted for free. Nobody's prime. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, also, uh, John asked like what formula I use for underbelly. Um, so it depends on the gator you're doing and whether or not you want to go towards that, like more cartoony gator look or realistic. Um, cartoony. I usually start with Rucksack Tan and highlight with Menoth White Base to Menoth White Highlight. And that's going to produce kind of like a yellowish cartoony underbelly. Where uh, if you want to do something a little bit more realistic um, and your gator is more of like a gray base, uh, I use a lot of Crixbane Highlight, washed down, and then brought back up with Crixbane Highlight. So, I mean, that's kind of like an off warm gray. And it works really well for underbellies. That's got some green in it too, that mm -hmm. Crixbane. Yeah, yeah. And for these guys, I did a mix of 
Crick's Bane base, or sorry, Crick's Bane highlight and Underbelly Blue, which kind of makes this like blue, gray, green. That's going on as like the theme for these gators. So. Um, but yeah, it's usually better, like, like understand that most of the time in like, uh, in the wild, their underbelly is not going to be that much different tone from the, the top of their skin too. It'll be like a lighter shade of whatever the top color is. So, uh, that's something to keep in mind when you're coming up with the formula. So like if you paint a green gator, it's much better to paint like a lighter green, um, for the underbelly, uh, cause it makes out, makes a lot better. Or do you need it? No, no, it's fine. Please join us. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and that's a lot of things to think about, too. It's also a fantasy world where we're dealing with bipedal gator men. Um, so. Uh, actually, John. Actually? Actually. 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 Oh, is that it? Is yeah, that, that's it. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Uh, actually, actually, um, you can look up. Um, so yeah, it, it's another thing too. Um, I've actually been looking up or, uh, to no one's surprise, probably. Um, uh, there's been a lot more studies coming over on the coloring of dinosaurs. So yeah, saw that in your private browser history. Yeah. What's that about? That's, that's what I'm into, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, no judgment here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, so like, there's a lot of like. Dinosaurs are a lot more natural colored than um, they've ever been displayed, um, even though they're related to birds. I mean, <laughs> most birds out there outside of the tropical varieties are fairly muted. You keep that guy away from me. Uh, Mark's been, uh, Mark has his fully painted uh, uh, fanatic from Shadespire with him. Can we show it? Yeah. Put, put, it, on, put it on camera. Um, so this is from the new Underworlds expansion, the Zarbags Gits, and Mark knocked that out last night at a painting party. At my house. Yeah, Jesse's house. So the next question is, Squig, Leader, or uh, Armored Gavo? I think do a Squig. Um, All right. The one eating the bone or the one jumping? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, do the bone one. I like the bone one better. Alright, I'm gonna go get the primer. I'm trying to do the marbling in um, the obsidian weapons, and I'm hoping it's coming off well. I know a lot of it that I do will have to be played up, um, especially with darkening the gold around it to increase contrast. Um, so, I'm excited to see a lot of this like come together. Uh, and a lot of it probably won't come together until we get closer to the last couple steps, uh, just because there will be a lot of playing with contrast and highlights as I work on it. Uh, so I have to be patient with it and try not to rush steps. Um, where Jesse is doing the opposite of trying to get as much done with little effort as possible since he has so much to do. That's right, baby. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you have a master's tournament that requires fully painted armies and two armies to do. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. The um, fully painted is kind of a loose term, you know, just making sure that all the different parts of the model have different colors used. They don't require necessarily highlighting, so some of the models are going to be a little flat, especially on my models that I'm bringing just because I want them to be painted to a higher quality but I have waited way too long to get started for uh, reasons that are just excuses um, so as a result this is this is where I am with my uh, with my preparation but the commission that Max gave me for his remaining Minoff models will actually be fully painted for the invitation so they'll be 100% painted uh, for the invitation I might get some more painting done at Warmerstein Weekend. There is a lot of just painting classes, a lot of uh, hobby, hobbying going on at Warmerstein Weekend. Um, it's kind of something for everyone. Uh, so. Did I tell you uh, Emily's joining us this year? No. Yeah, she'll be down there. She's actually going to be taking some of the painting classes and getting into it. Yeah. So, um, I know she's excited about it, and I'm excited about it. Uh, so, uh, taking advantage of that. 
and like Chris Miller is going to be doing the same thing. Like he'll be down in the hobby room pretty much the whole time. Um, I know I'll be in the hobby room at least on Thursday night, uh, trying to paint uh, under Chief Meyer as quickly as possible. Right. So we can go on my lists. I can't wait for to see you uh, win the uh, last chance qualifier. Oh so God. We'll have a 100% Gators ready for the Invitational, baby. Uh, yeah, no, that would be great. Uh, I would also love to see Akira win the last chance qualifier, so he has to paint an entire list. <laughs> That, his Ostrom list is beautiful. Yeah, it is. Um, I also hate it. Yeah, because it's Ostrom. Uh, so, yeah. But I'm, I, I'm prepped to have a good time. And um, I think after the last chance qualifier, whether I get far in it or not, I'm going to play in some of the casual events because uh, I really missed out on that last year. And I'm upset that I didn't sign up earlier because I missed out on the uh, RPG night um, with uh, Matt Getz. Is it Matt Getz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's their RPG I guy. Actually know. So yeah, the guy who writes their RPG fiction is like running. Uh, uh, poop. A uh, campaign throughout the weekend. Should be an interesting session for sure. Yeah. So yeah, it's all exciting and really kind of, I, I enjoy War Machine Weekend. Um, I love like seeing everyone because yeah. I don't travel a lot. I'm Really the farthest I ever go is maybe Crucible. I didn't go this year, unfortunately. Um, and luckily GigaCon is in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, so War Machine Weekend is really the only place that I travel to. And it's just great seeing all the people that I've met uh, in the convention circuit. Um, some folks that travel all over the country, some folks that you know only go to the Christian weekend, but just people that I've seen, played multiple times, gotten to yeah. know a little bit better. Uh, I wonder if Tom Wan's going to be there. I have a feeling Tom Wan will be there, and he will probably just follow us around like he did last year. Yeah, uh, just uh, randomly walk into a room. Just randomly walk into our hotel room at 10 p.m. and be like, what's up? Yeah, that's a bad list. Leaves. This tells me that it's not Legion, slaps my army tray on my hand, yeah. throws his scarf over his shoulder and walks out. Damn you, Tom Guan. Yeah, strikes again. But yeah, I'm in the same boat. I really enjoy hanging out with everyone. Uh, get to see friends I've made throughout the years. It's also St. Louis. The weather's usually very nice and, like, on the... I mean, it's on the chill side, but like, it's, it definitely feels like a vacation because you're in a different climate. Also, Larry Flint's. That's also nice. I'm yet to go. Yeah, I could have told you that. <laughs> so our friend uh, Jared is playing McKay, uh, Cake Proxy. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's uh. He's playing against Osram, who has, you know, Snipe slash Fire Force affected Iris 1, and he did not take a shield guard, so he's very sad face. Yeah. Um, McKay really likes his, really likes her focus. Yeah. Um, sad times. It's fine. It's fine. Just, just kill Osram with guns. He's not even 16 with dodge. John, do you have any idea where my primer went? Is it in the back? Nope. No. Uh... Is it in one of those boxes? I see it bottom shelf there. We solved the case. Um, yeah, Salty Joe's uh, in chat rooting for, for fish. Yeah, it's over, baby. Yeah. <laughs> fish. McKay is the hardest warcaster to assassinate in the game. Gets assassinated first two games. It's fine. Turns out Rask eats Valentine's for breakfast, and uh, drillers like drilling things. Hmm. Is that why they got named that? I feel like whoever named all the Rolex Jacks took a day off when they <laughs> made the Rock Hammer Rock Ram. Yeah. Uh, and like, the one guy that was responsible for naming all of the Rolex Jacks were like, all right, we got this little one. It's got like this uh, little shotgun spray thing on. What do you want to call it? It's like, uh, it's a blaster. Yeah. You're like, all right, well, this one, it's, just shot, it's got like, this little hand cannon kind of thing. It's like a solid shot, you know, kind of thing. And they're like, it's a gunner, baby. Yeah. It's like, you're on a roll. What well, this thing, it's got like this uh, drill thing. Like, what should we name it? It's like, drill. Yeah. <laughs> well, this thing, it slams for free. It explodes like, basher. It's yeah. like, all right, let's take a break. 
comes back. What should we name this one? It's got a knockdown gun. It shows rock hammer rock ram. It's like, who are you? <laughs> what have you done? And why do you hate people with speech impediments? Why, why have this so hard to say? That it makes no sense. Like even the Earthbreaker makes sense. It's got subterranean torpedoes. Yeah, he breaks Earth. It's like it can leave rough terrain. I get it. I'm on board with that. Rot hammer rock ram. What? Sounds like sort of some sort of dwarven STD. Probably is. Giving away some of the uh, some of the role play. Yeah. That's what the session's about. STDs and uh, the Iron Kingdoms. I bet you're really missing it now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Max invited Emily to Larry Flynn's. Did he? Yeah. Because he's a gentleman. Yeah. I hear there's a lot of gentlemen at Larry Flynn's. <laughs> Max, what the hell is wrong with you? Same things as normal. Drugs. Max does not do drugs. He works at a pizza place. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It's a respectable establishment. And I also work at a gas station, which is also a respectable <laughs> establishment. <laughs> Hell, I'm the manager. I'm not part of the cool employees. Yeah, they better not. <laughs> That's the like last thing they should do. The yeah. No, no. You don't hotbox the beer cooler. You, you hotbox the uh, the little slide door freezer that all ice cream's in. You just get a thing full of smoke. The customers can't see the ice cream. It's great. Family Channel, everyone. Gigabats Cafe. Bring your kids. It's fun. On that note, we have a Halloween party on Saturday. We're going to one on uh, Isn't uh, it tomorrow? tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Oh, is it tomorrow night? Wait, wait. Potterween? Or... Oh, Potterween at Stevens? Yeah, yeah. so we're going... Uh, we're, we might not go to that because we already told uh, my mother-in-law that we come see her play, which is okay. also Saturday night, and it's on the other side of town. So by the time that lets out, we might not be up for driving to the other side of Atlanta to dress up like Harry Potter characters. Though I'll be sad if we're, we're going to miss it because it's last time I was there was a lot of fun. Mary Elizabeth is very creative. Yeah, she always does a good job. Not going to be able to make it this year either. A friend of ours is doing a Halloween costume party uh, tomorrow night. Oh, cool. I'm going to dress up like David Tennant. I feel like you already have that costume on lock. I do. Yeah. I have a 10th Doctor costume. Because my wife is, a, you know, really likes David Tennant, so, you know. It helps out. The nights I'm going to lay down, you know. Yeah. Got to set the mood with a little, uh, I don't want to go, you know, action. Do, do you use that line? Yeah. I don't want to go, and then I do go. And then that's only like five minutes in, she's really sad. <laughs> Shop again. Uh, no. No, no, no. Uh, I've got a couple options when I'm finishing. And usually it's uh, I don't want to go, right before, or uh, right after it's done, I, I scream at Lon Z. As loud as possible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Neighbors. Maybe yeah. a little. Bada boom! Ah! You know? I don't tell them. The, the viewers know what I'm talking about. It's fine. How dare you? How dare you? There is so much trim on these models. Do not yeah. touch the trim. Told Do you, Jesse. Do not touch the trim. I was telling John, uh, I did a play with the guy, uh, with, with the guy that voices the Reverend. Years, really? Years ago, he played. Uh, we did the Mystery of Edwin Drood. This was years ago. Maybe it got, maybe ten years ago now, but Jeez. it was. Um, uh, he played the chairman, which is like the uh, narrator. 
Yeah. And I played uh, John Jasper in the play, but uh, he was hilarious, man. He was, he was so good. Um, and he passed away maybe three years ago what? or so. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what it was. He had some sort of. I, I, don't know. I know it wasn't natural. He had some sort of sickness. It was probably cancer. Cancer kills everyone nowadays. Jesus. Why are we talking about cancer again? Family entertainment. Oh. How'd the game go? Um, so I got him top of two. Oh, what? Oh, you just murdered Oscar without uh, focus. Yeah, I was disrupted, Bolden. Wow. wow. <laughs> what? Is that not average? Never, never hey, like, uh, we like, yeah, Salty fish Joe. Murders. <laughs> fish won. Yeah, baby. Fish was rooting for or Salty Joe was rooting for you. Well, I appreciate that, Joe. We were not. Yeah, because it was like, I should take a steel guard. We're like, mm, fish is dead. <laughs> no, it turns out I just don't play with focus. Oh, okay. Game's a lot different. Yeah. You just feed and uh, roll really well. So because you disrupted both of them, you're feeling pretty safe. <laughs> I'm he guessing. was also behind two jacks. Oh, you killed those jacks? <laughs> no. He so fish you? Oh, spread pass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we passed. Them. Fish uses no judge prowess. No, because I energize her. Because I apply knowledge. I fire for affected uh, uh, thing. I was gonna shoot a toro. I was like, you missed. And I had Kel and a bash beaded basher going into him. I was like, it's gonna be crippled. Way, it's gonna be Basher crippled. missed. Basher missed the five. <laughs> basher and the fire for five? Yeah. Oh, he didn't boost. I was like, it's a five. Yeah. Four. It's like, oh. Trouble. I was like, you wanna buy an attack? <laughs> oh, hey, Bobby. Oh, oh my God, everybody's here. Basher's like, I, that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, to be fair, the basher thing wouldn't have mattered. I would just lost a Toro. It was more like I just had to roll super hot after making a bad arm list. Wow. I made a better one, so. More testing later. Yeah, what did you get this time? Yeah, I played a very shitty that's, that's list into Osmo a few times. Like it's not very good. Well, the, you can unless they, unless far, they make mistakes. With McKay and the rail system, you reach pretty far. That's true. Like, well, it turns out their bash is half inch melee. That's pretty crap. Really? Yeah. It's a heavy, I mean, it's a five inch base with a half inch melee. Wow. Fair and balanced. I mean, they are just tanks. But well, luckily, it's 70 zero. Luckily. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Pagani. Which is now the War Machine's new Obama. <laughs> Can they hear us all on the stream? Probably. Yeah. I mean, uh, I hope so. What color should my squig be? Uh, orange. Orange. Whatever color. Orange. Orange. Yeah. Yeah, no, they are multi hued. You can kind of do whatever. Yeah, do like an orange to purple fade. Hey, Rob, I got that highway man in my car. Orange to purple? Okay. I hear they kill tips. They do. Oh, bag of tips! John Carter. John Carter shudders somewhere in Florida. <laughs> I he take looks a cold in He's like, I feel a disturbance. <laughs> A thousand Teps cried out in terror, and then were silenced. Beep. Beep. A thousand Teps cried out befuddled, and then were silenced. <laughs> What's going on? I do the murdering around here, dead. So much trim. Dude, this, I'm telling you, Kira, this gold is mine. This is one coat over, over practically white. You wash that with a rack on flesh shade and call it a day. Maybe one little Those highlight. Those models are so, so strong. Huh? Those models are so strong. What do you mean? They're eight points. Do you mean free? No, they're not free. They're not free? They're not free. They contribute to free stuff. Yeah, they're really good. Especially when, you know, they can be martyred veteran, for. Veteran leader, girded. Got it. Magical <laughs> flaming lance. Super secret McKay tech right here. <laughs> Steady, sturdy. Tough. That's off the board. They're tough? They're tough. What the hell? Top 12 weapon master. Top 12 mounts with the crit knockdown. Is Vilmon tough? No, he's just mad not in top 14. You think that if these paladins were tough, that Vilmon would be tough? I don't know. 
that. Vilmon was like, I'm not tough. I don't need to be tough because nothing ever survives to hit me. Vilmon was tough 10 years ago. He's aged. No, he's tough because he just stares back at Harbinger. He's like, you're tough now, baby. <laughs> D3 damage, D3 damage, D3 damage. It's fine. She's just hiding behind a wall, pulling a goth chick. Harbinger needs to be t Harbinger needs to be tough, so she can just like, I'll take that martyr tough, Mark martyr out. tough, martyr tough. Don't give private your personality. Book said no knockdown. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you stand up while you're cutting yourself, girl. Tough no knockdown. We need more of that in the universe. We should never have a podcast. No, it's too dangerous. We're just going to name it Morton's. You know, because of salt. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Have they indicated if there's going to be anything fun in Morton's pop in Warhammer? Yeah, so they're doing several tournaments. Mm -hmm. And, um, or not several, they're doing one tournament. Um, and they did say that they're going to have, like, mom pox support there. Like, so, like, casual play and all that sort of stuff's allowed. Uh, and they generally do pre-releases, so I'd expect to see some stuff there, but... We don't get any confirmation on that until like the week of. Um, yeah, but probably because they don't really know for sure. <laughs> yeah. Until putting on production, I guess. Yeah, I mean, all the production's done in house now, so at least they have like a little bit more control over it. Um, but it's comforting to know that even with that, the left hand still doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh my god, we're going pretty late on this stream. Are we? Yeah, it's, it's like 15 past 5. My, your hands. Joe, end the stream. This is embarrassing. <laughs> and that's how it All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Let's go smoke a ball. <laughs> smoke weed every day. Go to family store. See you there.